For over a century, we have thought of ancient humans as primitive, clumsy cavemen. Creatures that bridged the gap between the other apes and us civilized humans. But that's not the case anymore. As researchers have combed through caves, remarkable stories have been unveiled. Australopithecines that tumbled down sinkholes. The Demonisi hominins that migrated out of Africa over a million years before our ancestors did. But today we're going to be discussing a cave in Siberia, the only cave where we know three different species of human were living alongside each other. And the only place we found an actual human hybrid. So what's the story behind Denisova Cave? The entrance to Denisova Cave rests a little more than 25 meters above the bank of the Anui River. There's a second, smaller entrance hidden away just below. This 3D model shows the interior of the cave and how it is all connected. The larger living space, capped with a natural chimney for venting smoke, would have been an ideal living room 100,000 years ago. Connected to the main chamber are two smaller rooms the east chamber and the south chamber. The view from the cave is beautiful, looking out into a valley visited by plenty of familiar faces. Brown bear, red deer, wild goats, squirrels. But giants lost to time could be seen as well. Territorial woolly rhinos, herds of mammoths, and the less common straight-tusked elephants. Extinct Pleistocene camels and horses, Cave hyenas, cave bears, and even the occasional cave lion occupied the region. The deep valley would help hold back the worst of the extremes of the ice ages, which would come and go as a cycle. The colder periods, called glacial maximums, would turn the area into a dense forest. And when the warmer interglacial periods returned, the thick forest would thin out as the steppe ecosystem took its place. As the environment changed, so did the animals. When it warmed, ungulates and smaller rodents would migrate north from Central Asia, and yaks, dole, and even snow leopards would make the journey from the Himalayas. The fact that Denisova Cave rested at the northern, less dramatic end of the mountainous region formed by India colliding with the Eurasian Plate meant that during these warmer periods, as glaciers retreated, the populations moving north from east and west would merge in this region, allowing for occasional hybridization and the gene flow that went along with it. We can track this occurring in long, isolated populations of cave hyena, and we can even see instances of this occurring in humans. In fact, Denny, the only first generation human hybrid ever found was resting in this cave for over 50,000 years before we found her. Researchers in Germany say they have proof that a prehistoric teenager had parents who were members of two different species of pre-human. The cave's Pleistocene sediment layers were first discovered by the great Siberian scientist Nikolai Ovidov in 1977, and further excavations uncovered thousands of artifacts, leading to an entire miniature town being constructed for all of the researchers that would study the cave. More and more artifacts were recovered, revealing how the technology of these ancient humans changed over time. The earliest tools, dating back around 300,000 years ago, were late Acheulean tools similar to those found in the Near East around the same time. Over hundreds of thousands of years, they continued to slowly refine their tools, transitioning to a Middle Paleolithic industry between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago. And then between 60,000 and 40,000 years ago is when their upper Paleolithic industry took off. That collection of skill and tools, which was formed right here in the Altai, has been called one of the oldest and most unique in all of Eurasia. Despite all of that, hominin fossils remained rare, small, and extremely fragmented. But the 2010 discovery of Denny and an entirely new species of human through DNA alone motivated researchers to push the envelope and see what more they could uncover. Because the yearly annual temperature within the cave is zero degrees Celsius, the conditions are nearly optimal for DNA preservation. This is why so many of the bones themselves are able to be identified despite their lack of completeness. To understand the story of Denisova Cave, we need to understand where the data comes from. In these images, you can see the sections from the chambers within Denisova Cave that have been excavated. You can also see different radiometric dates that have been gathered from the sediment layers, allowing us to better understand the actual time frame the sample covers. Each white dot reflects a sample of sediment that was taken and analyzed for environmental DNA. 
Each spot that is red was indicative of Denisovan DNA. Each blue spot represents Neanderthal DNA. The yellow spots represent the DNA of sapiens. And the pink dots represent DNA samples that were human, but too degraded to specify the actual species. So by looking at the DNA makeup of this cave over time, we can create a timeline of cave occupation. For this video, I've divided that timeline into three sections, and we are going to break them down era by era. The first positive DNA hits are actually predated by some stone tools found below, suggesting that human occupation in this cave began as far back as 300,000 years ago. Despite the abundance of Denisovan DNA from this time period, only one hominin fossil has been recovered. Deep within the main gallery, embedded within layer 22.1, rested Denisova II, a baby tooth that has been dated to over 200,000 years ago. Researchers were able to look at the ratio of sequence coverage per base between the X chromosome and the autosomes to determine that Denisova II was a female. And based on the morphology, the girl was probably between 10 and 12 when she lost the tooth. Time would continue on, and eventually, around 190,000 years ago, the climate began cooling as the brief warm interglacial period transitioned into a glacial period. A shift in vegetation from more open steppe plains to thick forests followed. Animals, including the Denisovans, would begin to migrate further south. This is the first time the cave sediment shows a brief absence of Denisovans but it wouldn't take long for another human species to make this cave their own. This initial period is by far the least detailed. However, it does show us that Denisovans were inhabiting this region for at least 250,000 years. Denisova Cave never seems to remain empty for long, and eventually another population of hominins would make the cave their home. Unlike the previous occupants, this population would move in from the west, but it wouldn't be long before another group from the east would return as well. This period is marked by the dual occupation of both Denisovans and Neanderthals. By now, the tools are quite a bit more specialized than those used by the more ancient populations. And we see two distinct types, Mousterian and Levola points. Without being able to observe the interactions, it's hard to assess who was using what. But it's interesting to think about whether these communities were actually sharing technology and learning from each other's cultures. If so, would their descendants eventually return further south with tales of the strange people they ran into? There is certainly evidence that the two different species shared some close interactions. Activity seems to have really picked up within the cave around the time of the next interglacial. The fragmented fossils of five individuals have been recovered from this era. In order from oldest to most recent, Denisova 9, Denisova 8, Denisova 15, Denisova 5, the Altai Neanderthal, and finally, the famous Denisova 11, Denny. As you can probably infer, when a tiny fossil like this has a name, it's a good indication that there is something important about it. Everything we know about Denise of a Five, the Altai Neanderthal, comes from a single toe bone recovered from layer 11.4 in the East Gallery. Initially, the toe bone seemed relatively insignificant. But thanks to the conditions within the cave, researchers were able to use the bone to sequence the complete Neanderthal genome for the first time. This groundbreaking research allowed us to better understand the genetic differences between us and our closest cousins. And it revealed that the Altai Neanderthal was a female, and her parents were half-siblings. Potential evidence that the low population density of Neanderthals led to more common mating among close relatives. This could be a clue as to why our species won out over the Neanderthals. If the Ice Age up north led to fewer resources and smaller, isolated, spread out populations, that may have made them more vulnerable to being absorbed by the larger groups of sapiens that were encroaching on their territory from the south. The other named occupant is Denny. Once again, the actual fossil doesn't help us much here. But the DNA within hides an amazing story. The mitochondrial DNA suggested that her mother was a Neanderthal. However, the paternal DNA is that of a Denisovan, meaning Denny is the only confirmed first-generation human hybrid ever identified. Furthermore, 
Denny's father's ancestors also interbred with Neanderthals around 10,000 years earlier, showing that hybridization was probably occurring frequently in these rare locations where worlds would temporarily collide. The cohabitation of this cave continued into the age of artifacts, but by the end of this period, a third species of human, us, had joined the party. If you've been introduced to the Denisovans through a conspiracy channel, this is the layer you've heard about. There are only two hominin fossils that have been recovered from this layer. Denisova IV, a large Denisovan molar, and Denisova III, a single Denisovan finger bone. It's important to note that most of the articles discussing the artifacts from this period were published prior to the eDNA sediment samples that we have been discussing in this video. So while the following artifacts are often attributed to Denisovans, it is almost impossible to actually know which populations were responsible for their creations. Hundreds of artifacts have been found from this time. So I'm just going to go through some of the ones I find most interesting. In 2019, a team found a portion of a woolly mammoth tusk that had been carved into a lion statue. The figurine was radiocarbon dated to around 45,000 years ago, making it the oldest known animal figurine in the world. A 7 centimeter long sewing needle made from bird bone that dates back to around 50,000 years ago was found along with a bone toolkit that included more bone needles. Many different teeth with holes drilled through them have been recovered, and it's believed those holes were drilled to create jewelry from the teeth. The teeth included larger animals like bison, bears, cave hyenas, elk, red deer, and Siberian ibex, while also including smaller teeth from weasels and foxes. The teeth have been carbon dated to a period between 49,710 and 42,450 years ago making them the oldest known pendants of their kind in northern Eurasia. More artifacts constructed from the remains of mammoths including crescent-shaped blades, ivory beads, bracelets, and even a ring made out of ivory, which would pair well with the ring carved from white marble that was laid to rest in the same layer. They have also recovered beads made out of fossilized ostrich eggs, as well as objects that used precious stones not local to the region, suggesting possible ancient trade routes and interconnected communities. I couldn't talk about the treasures of Denisova Cave without bringing up one more object, an ancient bracelet made out of chloridolite, which looks dark until exposed to light, where it glows a deep green. The closest source for this material is roughly 200 kilometers or around 125 miles away from the cave. The bracelet itself was fragile, and evidence suggests that it's been repaired throughout its history. And careful analysis on the hole that had been drilled into this bracelet unveiled a wear pattern that suggests leather was resting against the surface, leading researchers to assume that there may have been a pendant hanging off of the bracelet. Many have made the claim that this bracelet is proof of ancient aliens or ancient advanced civilization. This is the same culture that created the pyramids. But to me, this is just more evidence that people living 50,000 years ago were just as intelligent and creative as those of us today. They weren't just dumb cave people. They may not have had iPhones or computers, but they were humans with advanced cultures. They taught others. They loved. And I'm sure they passed down stories that are even more eye-opening than the story we can piece together through the tiny pieces of evidence they left behind. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments and let me know what you want me to talk about next. I still want to make another video talking about some of the Denisovans that we found a long time ago and maybe Denisovans, we just don't have DNA to confirm that. But let me know if there's any of those stories from the beginning of this video you want me to talk about. I think my next video is going to be kind of dismantling one of the pseudoscience videos here because YouTube human evolution content, it's fascinating. But there's a lot of bad creators, like not just misleading, downright bad. Like we need to kind of fight back against this stuff. So that's going to be my next video. It won't take me nearly as long to make. It's not going to be nearly as much editing. Patreons, thank you so much. Um, none of this would be possible without you. This is so much more work than I realized, but you all make it worth it. Like it's awesome knowing you support me this much. Um, the next thing I'm planning on getting with Patreon money is a gimbal, which will help me take footage when I'm in Wyoming, um, doing some kind of dinosaur hunting, and I'll be able to get some footage where it's not all jumpy. It's going to be nice and smooth. 